Hey guys, in this video I'm going to explain the first logic game from the June 2014 LSAT, which is LSAT Prep Test 72. In this game we've got five reports, two general, three local, divided into two different segments and placed in order within each segment from longest to shortest. So this game has a couple things going on. We're splitting the reports into the two different segments and then placing them in order within each of those segments. So multiple considerations to deal with here. But this game, you know, as it's the first logic game of the section, as you might expect, it isn't the most difficult game within this section. Now I've laid out a bunch of rules that I'll explain. We start with the two segments, so I've drawn a dividing line separating the two different segments. We have three reports in the first, so I drew three spaces, two reports in the second segment, so I laid out two spaces there. We have our general reports, I and N, and our local ones, S, T, and W. Now they tell us that within each segment, reports are in order from long to short, so I put L, S within each segment, just as a general reminder. We have each segment containing at least one local report, so I put STW above each of the segments as a reminder there. We have national is always the longest of the five, so national will either be the longest within segment one or the longest within segment two. And sports is always the shortest, so sports will be the shortest within segment one or the shortest within segment two. Remember that the long ordered by the length from long to short is within each category. So we could actually have N as the longest in segment two and still have something really short like sports at the end of segment one. That is a possibility. And finally, I is always longer than W, so I put I dash W. The thing to keep in mind here is that that's happening within a segment not across all of them. So we could actually have I at the end of segment one and then W at the beginning of segment two potentially. That would be fine. That, that scenario would be in compliance with this rule. So that's pretty much it for the general setup. We'll get more into things with the specific questions. So let's jump in with question number one, which is a typical orientation question. We just want to take one rule or inference at a time and check that rule or inference against all five answer choices looking for violations. So for example, we know that we've got to have one of S, T, and W within each of the two segments. So let's scan through all five looking for violations there. A's got S in the first, W in the second, that's fine. B's got S in the first, W in the second, that's fine. C's got one of W or S in each. D's got one of W or S in each. E's got all of S, T, and W in segment one. That's not okay, so E's eliminated. Let's move on to another rule. We know that we always have to have N as the first of one of the two segments. A violates that having N not in neither of the first spots for each of the segments. So A can be eliminated, scanning through the others, none of the remaining ones violate that. Take another rule, we know that S always has to be the last of one of the two segments. Checking through the choices there, C violates it, so C is gone, the others are okay. We've got the rule that I must go before W if they're both within the same segment. D violates that, so D is gone, leaving B as our answer by elimination for number one. Next, number two, if the traffic report was the last report in the first segment, then what must be true? So let's put that down, see what happens. Traffic is last in the first segment. Right away, we know S can't go on the end of the first segment because T is there, so S is gonna go, have to go at the end of the second segment for certain. So we're definitely going to have S at the end of number two. And that's really the only immediate inference that we can draw. So when they ask us what must be true, 
it's probably going to be about s being at the end of number two. And sure enough, choice E has that. So I would simply scan the choices looking for one talking about sports being at the end of number two. So our answer is E for number two. We pick it and move on. Next, number three, if the national reports the first report in the second segment. So we're taking N out of the running for the first report of the first segment. We're saying it's definitely going to be the first of the second segment. Then how many could be the first report in the first segment? Well, let's look at what our five are. We have I, N, S, T, and W as our five in general. We know that obviously N's not going to be the first of the first segment because it's already placed at the first of the second segment. S is always the end of a segment because it's the shortest within, so that's out of the running, leaving I, T, and W. However, remember that we've always got to have one of S, T, or W on each side. So out of I, T, and W, one of those two will go in the first segment for certain. W is a little bit weird because it has the I rule here. And since N is on segment two, we know that we're not going to be able to have I within segment two because then we'd have neither of S, T, or W. So we already know now that I is definitely going to go in the first segment. And if that's the case, and we had W in the first segment as well, then we'd have to have I before W. So as for W going at the beginning of the first segment, that's not going to be possible. So we'll take that out of the running as well, leaving simply I and T to potentially go first in the first segment. So there are actually only two variables that could go there, not three. It's really just I slash W as our two possibilities for that space. So B is our answer for number three, two. Next, number four, general cannot be true question. So we'll just run through the choices. I is the first report in the first segment. Seems fine, we were just talking about that for the previous question, having I be the first in the first segment. Easy to have with the I before W rule, doesn't really seem to pose a, pose a problem. We already talked about that, so we'll eliminate A. Looking at B, N is the first report in the first segment. Seems easy to have with the N rule. We also actually saw that in our correct answer to question number one, choice B. So B is eliminated from number four as well. Looking at C, N is the first report in the second segment. Again, seems easy to have. Doesn't really pose a problem. We saw that in our previous question, of course, even in the question stem of that question, saying N is the first report in the second segment. Easy to have. C's gone. Let's look at D. W's are the first report in the first segment. Uh, here we have a problem, as we were just discussing. W being the first report in the second segment, that's a little bit suspicious, given the I before W rule. That's our answer. I'll play it out just so you can see what's going on. If W was the first report in the second segment, that would force N to go be the first report. If W was the first report in the first segment, N is forced to be the first report in the second segment right away. We've got to have I there as well in the second segment due to the I before W rule. So now we're not going to be able to have either S or W in the second segment, violating that rule. So for that reason, D is impossible and is our answer to number four. Next, number five, they're asking us what would fully determine the scenario, leaving no ambiguity at all. So I'd start by scanning through the choices, looking for what seems more likely to be suspicious in that it would be limiting enough to determine everything. So things mentioning I and W are likely to do that just because there's a rule about them that I must go before W whenever they're within the same segment. The choices mentioning N and S are not quite as limiting because there's always two ways each of N and S can go. So I'd start by looking at A and E. Start with A just because it came first. 
I is the last report in the first segment. Well, if that happened, that would force W onto the second segment automatically. If S is on, if I is on the end of segment one, then S will be on the end of segment two. So since we gotta put W somewhere within segment two, it'll have to go in the first space. Now we've got remaining N and T. N is always the first within its segment, so N will go on one here, and T will go on two. So we have NTI in segment one, then WS segment two. Completely resolved, no ambiguity at all. A is our answer, pick it and move on. Next, number six. If traffic was the first report in the first segment, what could be true? So traffic is going first in the first segment. That forces N to be first within the second segment. And we've always got to have one of S, T, or W within each segment. So right away, we know that since T is on one, we're going to have, one, we're going to, have to have one of S or W on segment at the end of segment two. And that's all we can determine 100% right now. We still have IS and W left to place around segment one, but they're simply asking us what could be true. Let's see if this is enough. I is the first report in the second segment. No, N is there. N is the second report in the first segment. That could never happen. N is always going to be the first within its segment, and we already have it placed in segment two, so B is gone. Whether is the second report in the first segment? Well, we haven't prohibited that right now, but the problem there is that would violate the I before W rule. We actually know that I is going to have to go within the second segment, within the first segment, because there's no room for it in the second. So W would never be able to go as the second report within the first statement here. So C is actually gone. Looking at D, W is the first report in the second segment. No, N is there, leaving E by elimination. W is last in the second segment. That would be fine. So E is our answer, and that's the game.